PR is one of the most misunderstood parts of marketing, both for advertisers and the companies that use it. Today, we're going to get to the bottom of how to use PR the right way and why it's gotten such a bad rap with our good friend, Lisa Rayner. We're also going to talk about Gone with the Wind. Why? Find out all that and more today on the Marketing Mad Men podcast. They say marketing is a madman's game. So now we turn it over to the Marketing Mad Men with Nick Constantino and Trip Job. Happy Saturday. Welcome to the Marketing Mad Men. Trip Job and Nick Constantino here from the Battery. You Indeed know, we are. I know. It's summer and the uh, place is alive. And I think people don't even realize, most people don't even realize baseball started yet. I always say it because we're so involved in sports, but like until summer kids get out of school oh. and like the kids are at the ballpark, you don't even realize baseball started. But now, based it's, on the crowds here and Memorial, it, it, oh, it started. It's on. It and, started. Um, you know, it's uh, it's going to be fun. We're uh, we're going to talk a little bit. Uh, one of my um, I don't want to say it's not a sore subject. TikTok is probably my sore subject, but uh, we're going to talk. Um, Public relations. Yeah. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And and look, I think PR is an essential part of business. I think when people talk marketing, that they don't realize that how many things fall under marketing, from advertising to PR to community. There, there's so many parts of it. So we just broadly say marketing, but you know, advertising is only one part of marketing. And there are yep. plenty of companies that have succeeded for plenty of time without ever doing official advertising, who still have marketing departments. So. Um, before I introduce Lisa, let me say my problem with it. Yeah. So my problem has always been in dealing with PR people that they are set up to fail from the beginning. Because unless you're talking big mega corporation that has well-defined funnels and, and, and um, departments, usually marketing people are forced to go out and find free advertising. And as someone who's always worked in advertising, you have to learn to weed out, look, look, the, what you're asking for is called advertising because you pay for it. If you think your story is that good, then I would have already covered it. And yeah. having that conversation was always hard, but I have made, at least two people that I know changed their career path by having that realization. So with that said, uh, welcome, I would Lisa. like to introduce Miss Lisa Rayner. Is, uh, it, is it too late to say I can't uh, make it to yeah, the show? Now it is. Your voice is on record now. So okay. uh, Lisa and I have, have, have worked together now for a couple of years. Um, with Attorney Ken Nugent, which is a fun campaign. We'll talk about that a little One later. One call, that's all. One call, that's all. Uh, but has a very long background and tenured background across many different fields and aspects of this. And her and I have gotten along because unlike most PR people that I've interacted with, she's a doer. And it's not about the let's spin this. It's let's get this ish done. And then we could talk about it after, which is what I think has gravitated us to each other is we just get stuff done. We get things right. done. Uh, in short notice, it's it's no. And it, when it can't be done, you admit you can't be done and you move on to the next thing. There's no reason to dwell. Um, so, Lisa, how are you, my dear? I'm great. Thanks for having me on, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's 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 set up the the, t the stakes for the conversation. Okay. So right. give us some background. Um, give us you know the the how you've evolved and how PR has evolved because that I think they'll shape the rest of the conversation. Okay. Well, I think what people tend to forget is PR people and advertising people are journalists. So we have a certain code of ethics that we go by. Marketing and sales are on the business side. PR and marketing are more journalists. So there's a whole different arena for for PR. Um, we've always gotten the bad rap because they people don't understand what PR is. PR is is goodwill, but it's also pushing a client, pushing a product, and getting your story told. And that's what PR is: is storytelling. Yeah, and then that's yeah. not that easy with advertising, no, it's right? Not. And in, and I think. When you see that message come across in advertising, if it's good advertising, it feels organic. But usually that story feels forced with an agenda in mind. And I think PR is putting that real spin on it to really tell that story, right. but really tell that authentic story. I tell clients, I said, if you want immediate exposure, let's buy an ad. But if you want something organic that seems more natural and, and you know, is caught up into the, you know, the time then you got to do PR, and PR takes time. It's relationships. It's pushing your story until someone starts to listen, yeah. and that's well, the difference. And I think it's it's obviously changed, and I think we'll get more into that. But why don't you give us a little bit of your background? How did you get into PR, and how did you stay in PR? I know, right? Well, I organically fell into it. Speaking of PR, um, she's PRing herself. I'm Look at PRing this. myself. <laughs> no, so I'm, I've been a writer mm -hmm. all my life since I was seven. I wrote my first poem. And I wanted to be a journalist because my cousin was a journalist. Well, she was in PR at the University of Georgia. So I went to the University of Georgia, majored in journalism, 
um, interesting enough, my first um, job out of college was with a newspaper. So I was a newspaper reporter. And I learned that the editors made fun of all the PR press releases that came in. So I learned to write a press release, not from my journalism classes, but from the editors that read them. And that's the whole thing about PR is that you've got to find your audience Mm -hmm. and you speak to your audience. So even as a PR person learning how to write a press release, we weren't speaking to our audiences when we would send out these press releases. So... Um, in the age of cut and paste, you can't do that anymore. You've got to speak to your different audiences. Yeah. Well, that's the tenet we talk about in marketing all the time is understand your audience. Exactly. And I don't care whether you're in digital marketing, whether you're in PR, um, whether you're in uh, video, you, you have to understand that. And unfortunately, there's still too many people who don't. Well, you know, the, the four uh, aspects to PR is research, plan, mm-hmm. implement, and then evaluate. And most people leave off the research and the evaluation and they just go directly to the planning and implementation where but the first and last steps are the most important because right. you've got to know who you're talking to they take the most time and then the hardest to quantify exactly <clears throat> and exactly. that's usually a problem pr is one of those things where you don't do it enough when you don't need it and then when you need it you need to push the gas too fast because then you're in damage control exactly. and that's when everyone screams for pr when it's already hit the fan yeah and if you don't build your story leading into that right. then it's much harder to do similar to advertising well, and, and and i like what you said though but um you know it's so important to do the evaluation and exactly. so i mean I, I several times in my career when i came into new business units or new companies you know you you have your multiple um marketing suppliers and and Typically, I would start with the PR mm-hmm. and would just do a review and ask them and, uh, you know, tell me what we've done well in the last six months or a year. Mm-hmm. And more often than not, they couldn't. Right. And then so that's like, OK, guess who's the first, you know, um, group that we're going to, you know, look at changing suppliers. You yeah. Know, and vendors. It, it, and it's, that's because it's so they couldn't hard. tell us. Yeah what they had done it's so it's so hard because it has to be something that's ingrained in the culture of the company and it's hard something to stop it's hard it's something that's really hard to start out of nowhere right because without that corporate image and that brand and that story then it's hard to do pr so if you're trying to start from zero with none of those things and then pr it's an almost impossible story to tell i have to imagine and and mostly because you said journalism and how much journalism has changed and what the code of ethics that is involved now and just one of the things i've always read Uh is that it used to be that you write a headline to get someone to read an article and now you write the most sensational headline you can sink all of the important stuff so deep in the article that no one finds it so it's substantiated because again it's not about the reading the article it's about getting the view to the page so you can sell advertising right, and everything exactly. so i'm curious let's fast forward let's go a little through the career what what has changed and how have the the follow the change of journalism how has that affected pr um, because again it, i love that correlation that you drew because it's making more sense to me now well i think the biggest change in pr in the last few years is social media mm-hmm. people didn't really understand what public relations was. We, we were the stepchild to advertising and marketing. Um, but now with social media, you understand, oh, I can put a story out there. And if somebody understands it and retells my story, then it can go viral. And then I'll get all this publicity, good or bad. And um, I, I, I give an example when people don't understand what PR is. I, I give the example of the time that Tom Cruise jumped on Oprah's couch. Mm-hmm. He had fired his longtime PR person who had kept him under wraps and told him, you know, this is our image. This is what we do. And he hired someone else to do his PR that was a relative. And after that, he jumped on Oprah's couch. He called out Brooke Shields for postpartum. And a part of PR also is you have to rein in your message and and say, this is who we are. This is the message we're sending. And. And you have to be brutally honest with your clients. If they come to you, which I do with Ken, he comes mm-hmm. to me and I say, that's not on brand. Yeah. So why would we do that? So social media has magnified what the benefits of PR. Like you said, both ways. Because yeah. it both also ways. highlights the, the Good and bad. And, 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 and that's and kind that's of the catch-22 of it. the catch-22. I, I think one of the things that social has done is you have a better sense of the engagement and what you're doing. Exactly. And I'll go back to, again, asking for metrics. So the one that used to drive me crazy when we asked for that review is, oh, we got 2.4 million impressions of what? Of what? 
You know, yeah. come on, we, the circulation in the, these magazines, whether they're trade or whether what, I'm just like, tell me something else. Right. Or, you know, and those well, type of. <clears throat> I think getting away from that as the sole KPI that many PR firms used has been a benefit. Right. Well, I mean, there was an, an instance where somebody, when a big firm was going to, you know, the PR person was tasked with writing the newsletter, the employee newsletter, mm-hmm. and um, they were saying, you know, who reads this newsletter? They were going to get rid of it but they decided to do a a survey of their employees 89 percent read the newsletter because they were waiting to cover one of them or their their area or you know and so they didn't realize they were getting ready just to get rid of this newsletter because they didn't see value in it at a big company the higher up you go the more removed you are from the the lowest rung of it people i mean you know you talk about even modern luxury and i used to have these friends Mm -hmm. at 944 people read the magazines because they want to be seen in the magazines exactly they want to have their picture in the magazine and again i think even that's changed a little bit nowadays now like the pay to play has become so pervasive that like yeah you can do whatever you want to if you pay enough money but i think it is true that 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 story and your internal messaging and your external messaging have to align exactly. because your clients your employees are your first bridge to the clients right right so no i think um so i think there's been a lot of positive that's moved you know in pr yeah. um what what is there a, a negative you've seen over the last say decade i think the negative and i don't want to talk politics because i'm you know, apolitical. A, yeah. I'm well, yeah, I'm apolitical. Um, is that we have these voices that had never had a voice before mm-hmm. that now do, and a lot of them, it's like the squeaky wheel. So even though I think a lot of people are basically good natured and and we want to all work together, it's the squeaky wheel that keeps saying the loudest. The yeah. messages that don't necessarily. Yeah. I, think, I think the social media, the fact if you go viral and you all of a sudden get a million viewers, it's not like the days in the past where a magazine can then shut you down. You, you, you you're, the you're there. You're, you're not right. You know down. what I find so, ironic, though? Is that the politicians are the worst PR people ever? Yeah. They are the political campaigns. My goodness. Well, well, we'll, uh, we'll come back. <laughs> we'll dive in a little bit more uh, to that after the break. So you're listening to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3. We'll be right back. Tonight in Arkansas, there's a mother tucking in her daughter and turning off the light. A business owner is burning the midnight oil. An at-home dinner date is plating up possibility. And it's all happening under one roof. How? The power of a conversation, like the one John from Integrity Solutions had with First Horizon Bank about his vision for a sustainable mixed-use building. Now it's not just words, it's life. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash John. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC. Now back to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3 FM. Welcome back to the Marketing Mad Men. Trip Job and Nick Constantino here with our guests talking about PR, Lisa Rayner. And, you know, we just kind of topped into some of the things that um, were negative. Let's let's go even deeper. Ooh. PR okay. and, uh, you know, deeper. some of the, the Well, I could, I could give you I gave you a topical one right, right now. You want to talk about botched PR? Look yeah. at the freaking debt ceiling debate, man. Look, just oh. the, there's an example of when nobody can win, so everybody should just shut up, and that's what's right. going on right now. Yeah. There's and no side that's just, winning any part no, of no, this PR nothing. debate, and it, we, as a country, just look like I don't even know yeah. a kind of way to say it. Just we, get it done. But but you can't. And I agree with both sides. I Look, I, I don't want to get into a political discussion, but talk about how somebody can botch the, the PR of this so bad. Everybody's pissed off. There's no right answer at all. So just stop talking. If you can't do any, and I think it is a perfect segue to some horror stories horror in stories. PR yeah. because this is, this is worse than a horror story. Yeah. I don't even know because it's real. And like you want to wake up and be like, it's over. And it's just not. So, give, so give what it, do you do, Lisa? When I just well, I know we're damage go control one hundred and one. But yeah, when when your client can't win, right. what do you tell them to do? Wow. So well, my client uh, always wins, Ken yeah. Nugent. So um, I don't have to worry about any horror stories with Ken. But I do have some uh, past experience with with bad PR or bad um, PR instances where I had to you know spin it around. I did the 50th anniversary of Gone with the Wind for Turner Broadcasting. I produced this 10-day event. We flew in stars from all over the place. Um, Butterfly McQueen came in, and 
we were trying to get Olivia de Havilland to come in, but she was fighting with Turner. They had uh, Warner Brother or um, they had done her a doll, mm-hmm. all the Gone with Wind dolls, and she wanted her nose redone on her doll, <laughs> and she held out as a hostage situation. She would not come in for the event unless they redid the nose of her doll. So I'm sitting here. I'm going. I've got. All of these important people have the mayor behind it. You know, Ted Turner is, you know, there. We've got all these people coming in, waiting on Olivia de Havilland to see if the if Time Warner was going to redo the nose on her doll. In the meantime, there was a group of the uh, Gone with the Wind cast members that would tour and go to all these events. And apparently one of them was a, said he was the baby in the um, movie. Well, he wasn't, but he toured with all the other Gone with the Wind actors. And then when it came to the 50th anniversary, the real baby came. So we had to hire separate PR people to keep the babies from each other. Because you had this one guy that toured with all the other cast members and was ingrained, but he was a fake baby. And then we had the real baby. So... It's and then I had a baby during the event, so it was like the battle of the babies. So, oh and you, goodness. but you didn't know this until the real baby wanted to come in, and then I'm, you know, in the hospital because I'd ten days before the event I'd given birth to Lydia, and they're like, "What do we do with the babies?" So we we hired separate PR people to. They were never in the same room. Wow. And I think good PR is when no one ever hears that and story. And no one knows uh, the is story. It, isn't, it, isn't that it's right? Like, like, right? That's what the PR like job is. Just, is like these it could have gone that... so badly. I mean, today it would have gone badly because right. we would have had TMZ there right. Right. trying to, you know. Somebody pitch. on site would have leaked with it the, out because the, they have monetary. Because yes. there was never monetary incentive for these things. Right. Now there's, because if you get that viral they, post that goes it. out and you broke it, it goes out. And again, it doesn't even have to be substantiated. You had a freaking baby show that wasn't even the baby that got to yeah. tour along for yeah. 50 years. I mean, it, it, it's, it's just crazy. And I think, again, let's state this, how important this is. You're not talking like, you know, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Right. You're talking <laughs> down with the wind. Like, we're, not, we're talking about, like, probably one of the top five most important movies of all time. Yes. And and how important it was to Atlanta is understood. I know oh. they got rid of those studios, but that, that this is this, was, is this is ungodly yeah. important. So yeah. when you're putting all that together, the amount of moving parts. It was and, an international story. We had people from Australia, right. Japan. I mean, it was, you know, and, and this was the other thing is that the people in Hollywood thought it was just a film story. And I had the people in Atlanta and Georgia, the, the Department of Industry, Trade and Tourism said, this is what everybody comes to see. It, so we made, we turned what was supposed to be a film story into a Visit Atlanta story, tourism piece, a tourism yeah. piece. Yeah. And it made all the difference in I, the world. I, I, and that was probably right as Atlanta was coming into it prominence. Was. It, was it, right, it, it was right when they were trying to go for the uh, Olympics. And, and, and I mean, it just fed you're, into... You were a blip on the radar then. And exactly. This is not offense to Atlanta. I right. love this city now. It's an amazing place. But I could not imagine what we were like having these conversations. If you had those conversations right. now, this would be a completely different thing. Exactly. The pop and circumstance. The movie stars are already here. Right. This is bringing people to a place that was a train station. I mean, pretty much. Right. So, yeah. And I think when you look at overall, I have to imagine the rights probably have changed hands five times for the movie now. Who bought who? Turner bought... MGM, but the, the right. rights have changed, which makes it even harder. Who the heck owns the IP? You got a doll company now. Yeah. I have to imagine that it's probably you're wrangling so many different right. parts and having to spin everything to be yeah. unified. Yeah. That again, good well, PR is who, if you don't hear anything about right, it. And who wants to have a stake? You get back to the tourism industry or the film industry. Exactly. And there's, you know, really understanding all the touch right. points. Is the governor involved? Is it the mayor? Mm-hmm. Is it the mm-hmm. municipality? Oh, goodness yeah. gracious. Yeah, I'm uh, involved in some of that right now. So I'm going to be going to a political luncheon uh, later this week. So, Oh, no. Trip yeah. Joe the lobbyist. Yeah, exactly. We're going to have to do a lobbying well, episode. We're going to have to do a lobbying but episode. But it's all about bringing, you know, certain industry that I'm involved in uh, to the state. So, you know. Well, you know, we also had the, um, the backlash from, you know, the issue of slavery and um, we had to address that too. And the oh, first sure. thing, at was, least it was then. It Could was, you imagine trying to do that now? No. Well, oh. you know what? Here's the thing. The first thing I did was I went to see Zernona Clayton, who was an icon. She was friends with Martin Luther King Jr. and she was works for Turner Broadcasting. I do believe she, there's a street named after Zernona Clayton. And I went to see her and I walked in, and she smiled at me and she said, "I know why you're here." And there was I didn't have to say anything, and she made it happen. She got Mayor Andrew Young. Andrew Young was the mayor, and he w- he mm-hmm. served with Ted Turner to on the committee. So uh, would you, with that one little show of this is good for the state, right? Mm-hmm. That and this is good for the city. 
it just kind of quelled anything that we that we in the state of in commerce. the state we, of we, commerce. This is, this is for yeah. commerce. And and I think that that's what we have to do now as a country. Is yes, you have you know, you have the left and the right and the middle and the up and the down. But you know, let's do do what's best for the country. Mm-hmm. Can't we just step back and put our you know differences aside and, and with the debt ceiling? Let's just you know. Yeah, I mean, that is unfortunately, I think probably the hardest part of PR though is admitting you're wrong, exactly. admitting it's been done wrong. I think one of the biggest problems with these campaigns is you're they always trying to spin something right, as opposed to, to saying. It. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! I made a mistake. Th- we have been going about this wrong. We need a change. And most oh. people, especially the higher you get on the totem pole of prominence and power, and look, I have a feeling that Joe Biden has a hard enough time as as hard of a time saying he was wrong as Donald Trump did. And everyone criticized Trump for saying never made me was wrong. I bet you Biden. Oh. Neither of these guys are going to say they're wrong. Right. And how could you fix an issue if you're not going to admit right. to it? Well, well you've got to be a statesman instead of a politician. Yeah, I think one of the problems is now because of all the media, there's two things going on. One. Um, it's on record, or it may not have been on record if you change your mind and admit you're wrong. And two, you can look into, and I'll use the the coaching spectrum, but it's not just the coaching. It's business leaders and out there that have, you know, done something that PR-wise is wrong and basically have had their jobs called for. Exactly. And in many cases, they've lost them. And, you know, it's one of those... Boy, the consequences in some cases for admitting you're wrong. Well, are, let's uh, let's bring up another helpful. topic. I want to talk Bud Light right now because you yeah. want to talk about PR gone wrong in, the, in, in, in every way. They tried to admit they were wrong by going in the polar opposite direction and throwing up a bald eagle with an American flag like that was going to fix it. So, I mean, they're, they're, you're at a point now where I, I can't imagine that people are going through PR school being taught that this is going to be an easy job. It's, no, it's, well, I think they're going to use this as an example of, of, of a campaign gone wrong. And, and a reaction gone wrong. I know two of the head marketing people for, for Bud Light have been put Axe. on. Yep. Well, they, have they been axed yet? Because I've heard they've been uh, put on hiatus or they've suspended. been suspended. suspended and, 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 we're going to keep you until right. this goes, goes yeah. out you know, and you're down with a big yeah. severance. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, um, and then, you know, they did that. They did, you know, they, and it was a small little campaign. That's what, that's the power of social media. It was this one small campaign and then one person told it to it it's like telephone they told it to another person that you know then it became this big story when it was just a very small influencer that they sent some product to and that's basically how it started well you you know this day and age you can't do that you've got to be on brand with everything and and you've got to you've got to state your message and you got to stick with it and i think that's then they put the clydesdales back yeah, on that's what I was saying. That's you know and it's like that is eagle. that is yeah and the ball and you, that's you know I, I i wonder if and I, and this is something that i've thought about often is it better sometimes to just not say anything is it better i know you have to control the narrative but if bud light had just let the angry people I think vent you're right. and be angry and just ignored it they probably would have been better off than immediately stay, feeling you have to carry it goes, one side but they tried to deflect and they tried make to walk it to back both sides yes. and they basically yes. torqued off you know the old adage of you're always going to make 50% of the people angry right. they made 99% and, of the people and, angry and, and like Lisa like you said it's a, it was a small influencer campaign so it just just let that run its course it run its and then course. have another influencer yes. come in and say hey yes. we do these things. i mean if you yes. think about how minuscule of a program that is it's probably 0.0000001% of how they right. allocated money because right. it was just product going to an influencer well it goes back i know you're a paper guy yep a big event coming at international paper something pulp pulp, pulp week yes pulp, international pulp, pulp week no, yeah anyway. yeah it's, well um, it's, pulp fiction week now we're talking yeah. um but you know it's it's the old adage of what we learned in school many moons ago that if somebody writes a letter to the editor and and it it goes in one week if you respond to it as a pr person then you then you've put fuel to the fire you just don't respond yeah. and that's I learned that in at UGA many years ago. So I don't know who, where these marketing people are. You're not from Georgia, I can tell you that. Um, you know, you just don't do it. You don't respond. Especially not right away. Well, I mean, let it chill for two weeks, see what happens, yeah. and then you could respond. You exactly. couldn't do worse than you did. Right. That's the, the only thing The other thing, and I shouldn't bring this up because I'm looking at the Georgia Bulldog over there sitting, you know, go dogs, is I think that my, you know, the, they did not respond correctly to the, tragic accident um and they have access some of the best pr people in the business and they didn't they didn't realize that they needed to 
consult and I, with. And I think that's one of the questions that we always used to ask, you know, for big campaigns, not the small ones. Yeah. Crisis PR. And, and, you know, look, one of my former employees, it's been a while back, I won't name him, but, you know, we get all the industry news and about a week ago um, there was a fatality in one of their mills. And I read some of the initial reports. Mm-hmm. And I remember back in the day, I mean, we went through crisis management. We had a book. We had a guideline. Yep. They weren't far off of it, but I saw some things, you know, hopefully it, it's horrible. Yeah. We'll see how it plays yeah. out. But you, you do need to be prepared. That's the worst case. I yes. mean, granted, your brand being destroyed like Bud Light or whatever. But at the end of the day, fatalities and Is, things like that. You've got to be that's, prepared. And, yeah, and how you handle it. And when you're dealing with with kids, you know, 18 to 24, you're going to have this. You know, this right. should have been in their playbook. Yeah. Yeah. I have another horror story. Please do. Um, I was the, produced the, um, for Woodstock Film Festival, all the film parties. We had Back to the Garden. We had, you know, the band come. And we had, you know, this, it was the first annual, the inaugural Woodstock Film Festival. We had all of these great stars. We were given D.A. Penny Baker, a well-known director. He was getting the prestigious award. And the festival was supposed to be September 15th of 2001. Well, guess what happened on 9-11? Shoot. Certain just a few days before. And then we were stuck with having this. We had planned for months. We had everything set in motion. Most people, a lot of people were on the East Coast. But the ones on the West Coast couldn't come to the festival. My goodness. Because they couldn't get there. I mean, that, they, that, so that was like, we, but we, we forged ahead and we had mm-hmm. a lovely festival, but it was this pall over it because of everything going yeah. on. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we could have either canceled it mm-hmm. or just, we thought, you know what? This is, you know, it's Woodstock. It's all about peace and love and understanding. So we, we forged on and, and held the festival and it was, um, a success, but it wasn't, you know, obviously yeah. what. You had an excuse on that what, one. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? That, that, that yeah. So, I mean, but you never know. I mean, well, you've got Well, to... ironically, you mentioned Woodstock. So, 99, I was at that Woodstock, okay? So, that was 99. I was 16 years old. I don't know what the hell my parents were doing letting me go to Woodstock at 16 years old. <laughs> uh, but, you know, talk about PR gone bad. I mean, that they burned the place to the they, ground. It was yeah. so, the way it was set up, the way it was organized, those were not event producers and organizers that are thinking about the lasting impact of something. There are people that are trying to cram 250,000 people in a parking lot with parking three four miles away right. luckily i squeaked through this thing my buddy had a i'm not even supposed to say this he had a handicap <laughs> parking pass that he shouldn't so we got to go to the front of the line like we got out a little early just to avoid it but i could not imagine imagine one of my friends was five foot one in filipino he probably yeah. would have got trampled i mean yeah. the the heart yeah. and, and so that's another one of pr gone wrong and the lasting memories that people have that people still talk about that like yeah. the fire festival like these things it the doesn't... fire festival i watched that um documentary on that it was in, in, in and you know part of what i do i my in my little you know bag of tricks is i do special events i do major events like the 50th anniversary yeah. going in the wind woodstock film festival and it is such a tedious time-consuming research yep. plan implementation yep. Yep. And you've just got to be prepared for everything. And you've got so, to think about so, the future now. And you've got to think about the future. It's not just the promotion. Exactly. It's Evaluate. The now right. it's the FOMO because the goal is to make the people that didn't come wish, wish that they them. had come also, well, you know, which is a whole other whole thing. Well, you know, yeah. Woodstock wasn't in Woodstock. It was in Bethel because uh. the event planners printed the posters. They printed the tickets. They did all of the advertising. And when they went to the city of Woodstock, they, they turned them down and they said, no, you can't have it here. So they're like, okay, but Bethel, Yasker's farm, the yeah, old, yeah. He, yeah. Let, he said, you can come, ha- yeah. ha- come have it here. And that's, you know. Well, well I've got one that will transition us a little bit. So I, over my career, done a lot in the sustainability space. And right. I was at a sustainability conference, got 15 years ago. And um, someone from Edelman uh, actually spoke. And I, I still remember that. I use this all the time. Um, but they talked about the four buts. Of PR, and I think about it in sustainability, but I think it probably applies to everything. And it's, you know, with you hear greenwashing and stuff like that going on right now with climate change. But there was number one or number four, really, it's the worst one, is cover your butt, Mm -hmm. right? And we'll get into that um, when you've done something and maybe environmentally wrong. There was kiss butt where they're trying to make up, but that's truly the greenwashing where people start to see through it. Mm 
It's uh, number two was kick butt, or you're doing a lot of good things, um, but maybe you're not completely there. And then number one is no ifs, ands, or buts. And that's really where companies should aspire to be. Right. And that's exactly. everything they do. But, you know, but the still, whole climate. Is still always a wrong answer? Isn't it wrong that you're not green enough? Or you do this. Oh, now they're coming back. Look at the lithium from the batteries. We think we're so dreaming of electric cars. But the mines in freaking South Africa where the kids are dying mining lithium. Like, isn't it well, a, that's where a losing battle? It, it, it can be. And I think that's where, you know, I get your opinion where you're just open. And this is, this is what we're going to do. Here's what we can control. And there's certain like. things that you may or may that, not be able to control. That's a brand I would relate to. Yeah. If they can lay it out for you clearly yeah. and say, this might go wrong, but this is the greater good versus the net positive versus yeah. the net negative. Well, I think, well, I'm dear friends with Laura Turner Seidel. She's, I, I just I admire her so much. And her father's Ted Turner, and he started, you know, Captain Planet. And she is such a great steward to the um, environment. Mm-hmm. And I have learned so much from her just by watching her. I mean, I break down my boxes because of her. I don't Mm -hmm. use plastic straws because of her because she leads by example. And I think if you have someone who truly is a steward of the environment, that they lead by example, and then everything trickles down from that. And I think that's what companies – you can't just – Say, oh, I'm going to go green. You got to really understand the dynamics of that and yep. the steps that truly make that, you know, your vision and, and you know, what you want to accomplish. But, but let's throw this back yeah. in there. But keep in mind the state of commerce, because I think one of the biggest problems we're, we're we're fighting this war over oil. Like, let's not let you're right. Plastic. Break down your own boxes. Do we really need What's gasoline? Carbon footprint? If, if, yeah. Was the whole world is on? Why are we making that the thing? That is what wars we are. That is a commodity that we let's stop that. And how about. Wake your butt up, go break down your boxes, Mm -hmm. don't use styrofoam, reuse cups. We we say that because that's the problem. Everyone wants to do the easiest thing, right? right? And let people fight a war as opposed to you. That's where I could get into all the carbon offsets and credits and things like that. And there's been. Right. But, th- but no one knows what a carbon offset is. You well, know, that's we, the problem. If we well, spend our money and our research on actually doing carbon offsets, how much better we would be than fighting wars we and need, people dying over We need gasoline. a standardization and transparency, and that's why the CEO for Vera just resigned. Uh, you know, because there we go. They had, yeah, because they had a huge project in Peru, and it was deemed really was invalid. And so, and that's the problem. Because Damn, we're going negative insane. again. This is yeah, not an easy job. It's not an easy job. It's not an easy job. You know, right. I'll, I'll give you an example of, of positive. Positive. And it's with Ken Nugent. Yep. And one call, that's all. And I know that we work on his campaign together. But the thing about Ken is that he, well, first of all, he's an amazing marketer himself. I mean, he gets marketing. He gets advertising. He gets PR. He gets it. And that's the best client you could ever want because they get it and they respect your opinion and they ask for it. And it, he goes with it most of the time. Sometimes he doesn't. It just depends. I had a conversation with him one day and we were trying to see, because he does so much for charity that people don't understand. So many different charities he endorses or that he promotes, that he gives to, that no one knows about. But when he, when he talks about his business and his clients, what he says is what people don't understand is the insurance companies are ruthless. Mm-hmm. And he gives a voice for the people that that don't have a voice, that don't understand that they can fight back and that they do have rights and that they, you know, they're they just get run over literally and figuratively in that arena. And he really believe and he is doing good for, you know, the community and his clients, but also, you know, he is true to himself, and I think that's why he's so good at what he does. Uh, I'm going to agree with that, but I'm going to also say there's something that is genuine and authentic about him. Exactly. I don't think he takes himself so seriously. He does not. And I think that being a little goofy and self-deprecating makes you more relatable to the common man. And right. I think part of the job of PR is to let that shine through in the right light. Without, I remember when we were filming with Grady Jarrett, and he comes in, it, this bomber jacket yeah. on. Like, a, 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 it's the funny. Uh. This thing like he yeah. he like like thumbs up like the fonts come uh, in and I'm like what did he have the uh, Ray Ban shades it, yeah no, it was just it was just and the smile on his face of knowing what he looked like in the mirror wearing that was like you see why certain people come across as speaking down or condescending and certain people are just and that's part of PR that's is capitalizing PR. on the positive exactly. side of it and spinning it so I think. That is PR got in the yeah. right way, and I exactly. think that that's where a good mix of advertising and PR work because you can portray 
PR messages through the proper channels of advertising. And that's right. where influencers come in. We talked about uh-huh. using Grady, using John Collins, using the sports angle, and the that intent glue. has to be the but intent staying has to be true honest. to the brand. Right, stay true. Your to intent the brand. has that's to be the honest. whole thing. You have to yeah. stay true to your brand and right. your message and your story. And that's yeah. when I think you get into the greenwashing and the people that are trying to. You cover can tell their... they're just trying to cover it up. Mm-hmm. They're trying to make things go away. Yeah. Yeah, right. and, and look, I think in, in industries are so different, right? There's some you're in a losing battle no matter what. Like, I'll give you another positive one. What has happened at the battery over the past six years and with the Braves mm-hmm. has been an unbelievable thing right. yeah. across the board. From Do you remember all the, sl- the slack, the flack that they got when they were moving oh, yeah. up here? And it was going to be this. Well, let me tell you what actually happened, okay? No one's driving down the connector in rush hour to get to a stadium with 45,000 people that oh. has one exit off a of crack alley. Like yeah. that's what's what's ha- that's not what's happening anymore. And People are driving, a, and there's a lot of tax base going on. But so there's we're, ingress and egress points. You've Cobb yeah. Parkway. You have all these places meeting together. Your tax base. You have a, a place where people want to come. They're not going to bucket. They're coming here. And the PR that they've spun has been so positive. World Series helped. The batteries yes. business helped. The commerce has it, helped. But I'm saying they are spinning a story that is trying to be duplicated throughout baseball. All right. Well, we're uh, out of time, and we'll be right back in a minute. You are listening to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3. This morning in the Atlanta airport, no one's missing a meal on Mac Wilburn's watch. With 11 restaurants to serve passengers, he's got dining for every destination. And it all started when Mac talked with First Horizon Bank about opening a franchise in the airport. Now it's open for business and cleared for takeoff. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Mac. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC. Now back to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3 FM. Happy Saturday. Welcome back to the Marketing Mad Men. Trip Job and Nick Constantino here with our guests talking about public relations, Lisa Rayner. And, you know, we've talked a lot about horror stories, a yes, few good stories. I think the <laughs> biggest thing that comes out is people think PR is easy. Right. Sometimes they even Not after sign this it. Right. <laughs> Not after Sometimes this. it even gets assigned to HR. Right. Is community relations right, instead right. of PR. But if you've got significant issues or potential challenges, I think to me one of the biggest things is you it's really not something you want to go alone. All never, right. Never go alone. Never go alone when it comes to, to you know, your image. Right. There's and, so many things that go into making your image and who you you know, you ha- you have to be true to yourself is the first thing. And it's the this first um, step of PR, which is research. Do your research. Right. So if someone were to be thinking about a major, look, they've got some potential issues or whatever, reach out. How, how should they go about? What, what are the things when they're looking to find a PR professional or firm? What are the watch outs? What are the things that they should be thinking of? Well, you know, it's interesting because PR is it's, it's just like hiring a, an, an attorney You've, an, or a doctor. You specialize in different things. And so there are certain, you know, PR companies out there that just do restaurants. Mm -hmm. So if you have a restaurant, then I would hire a PR person that does restaurants. Um, I'm, I'm more, I do luxury brands and um, celebs and I, I'm behind the scenes. So I kind of push my clients out rather than myself. Nick and I had an interesting conversation about that, that I've, you know, I've got, I've just got a new website that is more branding for me because mm-hmm. people, you know, and, and a good PR person, you don't know what they do because they're behind the scenes. Right. But you just do your research, just like everything else. Do your research and see, you know. Yeah, I mean, you want, if if you've got a brand that has the opportunity to reach out and connect on social, you want a PR firm that has a lot of experience in the social media space as Correct. well. Right, right. And now there are certain... PR, um, my friend Lacey Watkins, she does um, K Social. She specializes in social media. Mm-hmm. So if you have, you know, a luxury brand or a you know niche brand, then you would, I would say, and you want to do mo- mainly a social campaign, then you need to get a social media marketing team. Yeah, I would yeah. also say do not hire somebody that's just going to yes man you or yes exactly. woman you because exactly. one of the things about PR is, is and we've seen it gone wrong is when that decision is made. 
that decision has to be finite and it has to be unwavering because the second you put out and unwaver or move too quickly, you're going to get rid of all the goodwill that you right. created. And we, in marketing especially, we are we, surrounded. And a good PR person will say, you can't do this we, because it doesn't match your brand. I'll go back. We actually had a very good firm, a very well-known firm. Right. And we kept them. I mean, they were great, but they had a VP who was basically on the, probably more on the account side, mm -hmm. who would come to a lot of meetings. And throughout our entire meetings would just head bob up and down, yes, anything anybody on our team said. And I finally, after about six months, went to the president and just said, look, you guys are not in jeopardy whatsoever, but this VP, don't have them come out don't anymore. Have them come. Right. I said, because... You know, obviously, you think it's highly bringing, of this person. Value. That's not bringing it, value. The rest of the team is. I want. I don't want someone just bouncing their head yes and think and everything was great. Because you need. You yeah. know, I worked in New York. I worked for a PR firm called Lou Hammond and Associates, and we did the Walter Fastoria, and we did um, Giardelli Chocolate. We That's had where I had my prom. Yeah. By the way. Fabulous. The Walter, Walter Fastoria. Yeah. Let's talk of about where I'm did. from, um, Long Island. But we, Lou, we had a meeting and and we were talking to her and she was asking our opinions and finally she said, "Hey, I pay you too much money just to sit there and agree with me. Yeah, I want to hear your opinion." And I went, "That's you know, that's what she got." Yeah, yeah. That, that's but and that's opinion. and that's good. And I think that's a great talking point too. What advice do you have for people who want to get into PR? Because you know we're talking about how you hire somebody. Let's talk, let's flip it. Let's talk about you get a young guy or girl, twenty years old, wondering what they want to do in their life. They listen to this episode. Now they're scared. Yeah. Their pants are scared off. It's right. all it's over. So let's woo them back. Talk about what well, to look for, what to do to be actually, in PR. Actually, I have two interns from the University of Georgia, Ellie and Rahel. Shout out to them, and they're fabulous. They're with uh, you know Grady School of Journalism, and they're. They're Ken Nugent's TikTok team. And hmm. so they've taught me a lot about things, but they told me that I've taught them. One is an entertainment, is wants to go into entertainment law, but she has changed her focus because we did the event with Buck Ballou, yeah. and she wants to do more uh, of the event side of the, you know, of the entertainment law area. And the same thing, Ellie is a true PR person, and um, I've given her the chance to do her research and, and write the article and send it out send out the press release with her name on it so i i i just say that if you you've got to have a passion for it and when you get into your major when you explore the social media and the you know the news writing maybe you think that you want to be a you know a pr person but you're actually a better news gatherer then become a reporter. Yeah. You just got to test the waters. And I think uh, one don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. And don't get yeah. I found out early on that I was an excellent planner of events and that's and the events are the ones you and, you you, and you your results are tangible what yes. you do the fire the ability to handle right. stress and i think don't do pr from a golden castle exactly. it needs to be on the street level you need to be and, there in the fire and if you're whether you're an intern or a junior and you start doing events ask for opportunities to do different sides of the events mm -hmm. exactly. i think people don't understand all the different components so many moving of events. parts so many moving parts to yeah. pr yeah, like the most important part is while the event is happening, make sure you participate like you're just a visitor so you enjoy yeah. the, the full experience. Exactly. Or that's just my excuse when I'm on a tailgate. I'm like, no. I put this thing on. Yeah, I'm yeah, having yeah, fun yeah. now. That's the number one rule of events is after uh, – there's nothing else you can do when it starts, then you've got to enjoy it. Get that off your face and smile. You've got to enjoy it. it. Oh, I, I, I do. I know and, I do. You know, and it's, and it's gained – I think that's another point, gaining perspective. We had a trade show once and um, – you know, I came in and the booth looked fantastic and all that. And we had we did have a media tour and all that. And, um, you know, but one of the uh, one of my marketing directors said, oh, God, I, I got to go get this. I got to go get that because, you know, we need a few more plants. And I'm like, you and I are the only people who know that we had to move this sign. Exactly. Six it's plants fine. are not changing. Exactly. It's yeah. not changing. It looks fantastic. I'll cover you. If right. someone the, trust me, no one's going to know. But it, it's, and you know, that's the it's thing you've got to let that to, go because no one else knows what is meant to be. Right. They only know what and you, they see. And you never write 100. Some of the exactly. worst events I thought were going to be the absolute most disaster. You know what? The sun came out. It was a nice day. And that's right. all that matters sometimes. Right. It's not you can't control everything. What you can do is over control and affect the demeanor and the mood. Right. What if that what if the rain comes down right as that band is playing the song that everybody loves? People selectively remember. We have a, do a pretty good job of remembering the positive things. Exactly. So just don't make it so bad. Yeah. And the ultimate trick, start and end right. Yeah. The middle, it's like a comedian. The middle, eh, start the event right and, <laughs> and make sure right. you end that and, event and right. And if you have a brand message that you're trying to get across, 
to your point, end it and make sure you reinforce that message. And reinforce it and, and make so, sure you follow up afterwards. And so to and reinforce for Lisa, how can people find you? You have a new website. I do. It's Lisa K. Rayner. I want to say put the K in there because apparently there's a Lisa Rayner who is an organic farmer who cans, and that would not be me. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> luckily that's not something I'm going to ever need, but yeah. yes. Maybe uh, organic farmers need PR. Now, you know what you should do? You should be a PR person. (laughs) Hey, I I found that you're annoying my website, so you need any PR? Uh, Yeah. Oh, wow. So um, Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, no, this has been fantastic. I mean, I think, uh, again, PR is probably very misunderstood. Most definitely. Um, You don't think you need it until you need it. We're the crazy ex-girlfriend. You don't. Don't know what we are until we're gone, right? Yeah, hey. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a whole that's a perfect, that's a perfect other. Say, but oh, also, but look, look, I think it'll also help you in your life because you know what? You're still doing your own PR every day. Just like every we talk day. about sales. You're always selling yourself. You're always marketing yourself. Yep. You know what? If you're good at PR and damage control, yeah. it'll probably help you in the rest of your career no matter how you end up going. Uh, uh, no question. And I think that done well and staying to point um, can really help your brand and, and yourself long term. So, uh, Lisa, thank you. Thank and you uh, it's been another great episode of the Marketing Mad Men here on Extra 106.3. Tonight in Arkansas, there's a mother tucking in her daughter and turning off the light. A business owner is burning the midnight oil. An at-home dinner date is plating up possibility. And it's all happening under one roof. How? The power of a conversation. Like the one John from Integrity Solutions had with First Horizon Bank about his vision for a sustainable mixed-use building. Now it's not just words, it's life. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash John. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC.